Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to continue the conversation about nitrates, and in fact today we're going to do a little experiment. Um, I did a video two days ago, the day before yesterday, it has not quite been 48 hours yet, where I did a massive water change on this tank, and it did not lower the nitrates nearly as much as I was expecting. Uh, I also did a filter change, that's why I have the lid off there, so you can see that's a bright new shiny filter. Uh, one of the things that was suggested to me um, by several people, and this sounds reasonable, was that the nitrates are trapped in the gravel because that's where all the filth and dirt is. And in the instance that I did the water change on this tank, I did not, in fact, vac the gravel. I simply siphoned some of the water out. Now, I'm still a little dubious about that. Uh, you would think on an 85% water change would have removed more uh, than just under half of the nitrates if it was all trapped in the gravel. Uh, I will pontificate on my findings at the end of this video. Uh, right now, what I'm going to do today is we're going to do some before testing of nitrates and I'm going to do some uh, testing of my source water and we're going to do a testing of some control water so that we can verify I have accurate tests. I'm also going to discuss a little bit about how to do um, the nitrate test with the API test kit. That way, for those of you who are questioning whether or not I know what I'm doing, uh, you will be satisfied that I do indeed know what I'm doing. And for those of you who are not sure if you are doing it the right way, you will get um, an example of how to do it correctly. So let's get started with that, and then we're going to come back and we're going to do less of a water change and more of a gravel vac. I'm only anticipating maybe about a uh, 10 to 20 percent uh, water change on this but I'm going to vac the gravel and we're going to see how filthy the water is that comes out of there and I can guarantee it's going to be really really nasty looking uh, so let's see if we can't do a huge reduction in nitrates simply by doing a minor water change but vacuuming the gravel and that will be one more piece to the puzzle so let's get started by looking at some before testing right, so here we are at my high-tech testing station and we have three tests here. One is the control test of my RO water, and that is in the center, and as you can see, it is showing zero nitrates. Uh, that's about what I expected. And these colors do not come out on camera correctly. Trust me, I've looked at them against the chart. That's showing zero nitrates. I know it looks a little on the brown side, but it's not. It's yellow. Uh, the vial on the left is showing about little, you know, almost five parts per million. I'm not even going to quite call it five parts per million, and that is my tap water. Uh, I know I have very high nitrates in my source water. It's about 80 parts per million coming out of the ground. I live in a farming area, but I have quite an elaborate system uh, to soften the water and to take the nitrates out. I also have an additional system installed for RO and I have a 65 gallon RO reservoir. Um, not going to talk about my water right now and for those of you who are scratching your head asking me why the hell don't I use my RO water, I have my reasons and those in some other videos on my not necessarily how to playlist and uh, we can talk about my water in a different video. This is just going to be about nitrates in your tank. So there you have it. I've got my three vials. The water on the right obviously is the water from the tank and it's showing about 60 parts per million. Now keep in mind it was only less than two days ago that I did a massive water change on that tank and brought the nitrates all the way down to about just under 40 parts per million and now we're back up between 60 and 80 again and it's only been two days and there's only one fish in that tank, uh, albeit a fairly large one. Now, when we do these tests, you take your vial, I'm going to try to look at what I'm doing while I'm looking at the phone too, you put your water in right up to where the mark is, and when you're looking at it and you're holding it up, the bottom of the curvature, as the water sits in there, you'll notice it rides up on the glass a little bit, the bottom of the line where it curves should be what sits on that line, and that will be your, if you want that kind of accuracy, that's exactly 5 mil. So, you take your first bottle and you put your 10 drops in this bottle. Well, let's use one that's already got some liquid in. It's really hard to do this while I'm looking at my phone. Uh, once you've put them in there, you want to make sure you mix up the first uh, solution in your water. And you simply do that. You just turn this over five or six times. You just want to get it mixed up. You can shake it a little bit if you want. Uh, I find these lids tend to leak, so I don't shake them too hard. Next, this is the very, very important part. You take your second bottle 
and you have to shake it very, very vigorously. It is not so much the liquid that's in this bottle that's important. It is that it's solids that are actually suspended in this solution. So you've got to shake it really, really vigorously for at least 30, 45 seconds to make sure you've thoroughly incorporated those solids into the liquid. When you drop the drops out of the bottle, they should come out nice and smooth and easy, just like it's a liquid. They should be almost clear, maybe a little bit of a cloudy cast to it, but it should basically look like a clearish liquid that comes out. If you're having problems with it getting stuck or it's clogging up a little, uh, you gotta squeeze a little harder to get one of the drops out, you didn't shake it enough and you've still got clumping solids in there and you need to shake it harder and longer before you actually use it. Once you've done that, you need to then take your vial with both solutions in it and you need to keep those solids moving and you need to keep them in solution. So you've got to do this for an additional minute after you've put them in there. Uh, you can simply do that. I count it up and over as one. So that would be one, two, three. And if you do that 60 times, you've done it for a minute and then you set a timer and you let it sit for five minutes and you let the colors bloom. So that's how you do a proper test and then when you actually check the color, I've said this before, you have to hold the vial up against the card. You can't hold it out in the air or have light go between the vial and the card. It has to be uh, sitting against the card and that will give you your most accurate testing. So that's what we're starting with. We've got a test of 60 parts per million. We know that's accurate because my RO water is showing none and my source water, which I know to have about five parts per million based on my system, is accurately showing about five parts per million. So I'm confident that that 60 parts per million is an accurate test. So let's get started on doing the actual gravel vac and see what happens from there. Yeah, see that's, well, that's actually not as bad as I was expecting to tell you the truth and yeah, see that's a little more there I don't know how well this is coming out on camera no it's not nearly as filthy and disgusting as I was expecting it to be I'm going to get on with filling this bucket up the water that I vacked out. So again, not a ton of nastiness considering it's been, I don't know, two weeks since I've gravel vacked in here. Uh, again, this is only one fish. It is an Eclipse catfish, so it's fairly large for a 10-gallon tank. Um, so it does produce a lot of waste. But I also, and this is important, I took a sample of that water. Um, my reasoning being that if everyone is suggesting that the nitrates are hiding in the gravel and they are in that filthy water, then pulling that water right out of the bottom with all that filth should therefore also have water that is much, much higher concentration in nitrates. I made sure that the water I sampled, I had swirled up and I looked and sure enough the vial had particulate matter floating and swirling around in the vial. So I took a sample of that water and I took a sample of this water after about 15 minutes of the tank being up and running again after the roughly 25% water change. So let's go look at the test results and again you'll begin to understand my frustration. Alright, so here we go. We have already established that this is my source water at roughly 5 parts per million. This is my RO water at zero. This was my before water at roughly 60. Which one of these vials would you guess is the vial that was out of that bucket? And which one would you guess is the vial that is out of the newly fresh tank? And if I hadn't already said so, could you guess which vial was the original pre-water test vial? I'm guessing you can't. This is out of that filthy, filthy bucket, and it literally has physical particulate matter floating in it. And this is after my water change that I've just done. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know. 
So let's go back over. We'll go sit. We'll look at a different tank, something that's a little prettier to look at, and we will talk about this for a minute. All right. So first of all, I want to make it clear that despite the fact that you did not see any real change in those vials, there was an impact. You know, we did make a little bit of an impact when we did that 25% water change. I knocked about 10 parts per million nitrates out of the tank. So we went from roughly 60 down to about roughly 50 parts per million. So again, with a 25% water change, I did not get anywhere approaching a 25% reduction in nitrates. And that's the crux of what this video is about. That's what baffles me. Um, the idea of finding a higher concentration of nitrate in the gravel uh, was always something I was dubious about. I never really expected that to pan out. Um, I did that little experiment just for the sake of ruling it out and I was able to rule it out. You just saw that the uh, bucket water nitrates were identical to my um, before test water, which was just skimmed right off the surface in a vial. So I never really expected there to be a higher concentration of nitrates in the gravel um, or in dirty water with physical dirt floating in it than otherwise. It just doesn't work that way. The total dissolved solids in your tank are just that. They're dissolved into the water. And as long as you've got reasonable water flow and circulation throughout the tank, those nitrates are going to be as evenly distributed throughout the tank as any other uh, dissolved solid. So I was able to rule that out. You know, I've now done, um, again, a non-scientific experiment, but one that satisfies my curiosity. So I've ruled out the idea that the nitrates are hiding in the gravel. I also want to rule out the other um, elephant in the room, and that is the possibility that the nitrate test kit that I'm using is not accurate. I have plenty of reason to believe that it is perfectly accurate. Um, you just saw the control test we did, so that's an indication right there that we know that that specific test is accurate. And the API tests in general I've used for several years. I go through them very frequently. You can see how many tests I do. I do stuff like this all the time. Um, I, I buy new equipment and new um, test kits all the time. That's why I have so many vials that I can use for tests. Every time I buy another test kit, I get more vials with them. So the idea that it's an old, outdated test that had been sitting on the shelf for a long time um, doesn't play out. And I also, the real censure is the fact that every time my water softening people have been here doing any work on my system, you know, I've been right there shoulder to shoulder with them because I want that water to be to my satisfaction, not their satisfaction. So before they leave, I test my water with my test equipment. And they stand there side by side because they want to make sure that, you know, they're not going to take my word for it. They're going to test the water with their test equipment. And we've always come up with identical readings on nitrates. Now, these are people that are professional um, water softening system people. That's what they do. And when they open up their magic chemistry kit, it's got more vials and bottles than you could shake a stick at. So I doubt they're using an API aquarium test kit um, in their water softening or in their uh, water testing equipment. Now, for full disclosure, I will say that they performed the test in an identical way that the API test kit is performed, uh, right down to vigorously shaking their second bottle for 30 seconds, and then, you know, after it was all mixed together, they would invert the vial for another full minute, and then they would let it stand for five minutes. So I have good reason to believe they're using the exact same reagents in their tests that I'm using in mine. Which again leads me to believe that with API, the real reason you would have any kind of inaccuracy is for people that are improperly doing the test and they're not shaking the vials thoroughly enough and things like that. It's not going to be that for some reason the reagents that API uses aren't accurate reagents. It's a nitrate test kit. I don't have any reason to believe that that is not an accurate test kit. So for all I know, what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. I'm doing a 25% water change and I'm getting a 10% reduction or you know a 15% reduction in nitrates. I do an 80% water change and I get a 50% reduction in nitrates. So there's obviously some sort of equation that's going on where you're not getting a one-to-one -one type ratio of a 50% water change will give you a 50% reduction in your nitrates. Now, I don't understand why that is. It doesn't make any sense to me. I never um, really believed in the idea that the nitrates were hiding in the gravel. That just doesn't make any sense when you really think about it. Um, 
it was the only viable option. So I did a little, um, you know, an unscientific little experiment just to see what kind of results we came up with. And we came up with exactly the results I expected we would come up with. And that is the nitrates in the um, water at the bottom of the tank near the gravel is identical to the nitrates that are in the tank that are floating on the surface of water. So again, that bucket right there, as filthy as that is, had the exact same amount of nitrates in it as the surface water that I skimmed when I did my original before test. So I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to make of this. Um, I do want to continue this discussion. I welcome anybody's comments or opinions down below. Uh, I am going to continue this discussion in another video, and it's going to be more of a my thoughts kind of discussion. I'm going to kind of, I don't know, wrap it up is the right word. But, you know, I said long ago that the, this discussion was going to be an ongoing thing, and there's just way too much to put in any one video. So I'm going to call this the end of this one, and if you subscribe now, uh, you will not miss the update. I also am going to get to my Brackish tank, I promise. I really did shoot a video the other day about Brackish Basics, and then I accidentally deleted it. So that was 20 minutes of video gone. Uh, I will get back to that. I will redo that. So look forward to a Brackish Tank video coming up here in the real near future. So thanks for watching this one. Again, I appreciate any comments or thoughts. I'd love to get to the bottom of this and just have a better understanding of what's going on in my tank. And I will be doing more videos about my discussion on nitrates uh, here in the very near future. And I do want to talk about some losses I've experienced recently and how the nitrates may or may not pertain to those losses. So thanks again for listening to my long-winded video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, and as I already said, go ahead and subscribe now. You won't miss any updates, and I will see you real soon.